I'm Noel Rappin, author of the book Take My Money, Accepting Payments on the Web, and this is a bit of detail about one of the topics in the book, namely money. Money is not like other data. If you're writing a weather app and your temperature data is off by a fraction of a degree, people are not likely to notice. But if your money data is off, people will notice. That precision makes it hard to deal with money accurately using the number types most commonly provided by programming languages. Let's take a look at why. When you're representing money in your programming language, the obvious choice is to use floating point numbers, which are there to support decimal data. However, this can lead to problems, as you can see in this Ruby Interactive session. In this session, I multiply 3.01 times 5, and instead of getting 15.05, I get 15.049 repeating. You can say that error is not that big a problem because you're only off by the tiniest fraction of a cent, but tiny fractions have a way of adding up. The error also affects quality testing, so 3.01 times 5 would not be logically equal to 15.05. This math error and this equality error can lead to subtle bugs, and the very last place you want subtle bugs is in the part of your code that deals with money. Let's talk about why this happens and how to work around it. Most programming languages give you two choices for representing numbers, integers and floating points. Integers are easier, let's talk about them first. Internally, integers are stored as binary numbers, so 15 becomes 1111 base 2. But there are an infinite number of integers and computer memory is finite, so the computer integers are limited by the amount of bits that the computer uses internally to represent the integer. The real numbers represent any number that you can represent by a set of decimals that ends. Mathematicians call this set uncountably infinite because between any two real numbers, there's an infinite number of real numbers between them. So between 1 and 2, you have to get from 1 to 1.1, and then 1.01, and 1.001, and so on and so forth. Because the real numbers are uncountable, it means the exact 1 to 1 encoding that we use for integers just can't work for real numbers. Any representation of real numbers in computer memory is going to be approximate. Floating point numbers is the encoding approximation that computers use to represent real numbers. A floating point representation splits the number into two parts, a base and an exponent, each of which is allocated a certain number of bits internally. 3.01 is represented as 3.01 times 10 to the first, whereas 301 is 3.01 times 10 to the third. That's part of the representation, but our problem really starts when we need to convert these numbers into binary digits. The 3 is easy to convert. It converts to 1, 1, base 2. It's the 0.01 part that's complicated. There is an algorithm for converting decimals to binary. The key point is that the only decimals that can be represented exactly in binary are those that can be written as fractions where a power of 2 is the denominator, so a half and a quarter, but not a tenth or a hundred. No other fraction can be exactly represented as a floating point, and that turns out to be a lot of numbers. So 3.01 becomes 1, 1 for the th for the 3, and then a long set of decimals for the point 0.01, all to the power of 2, times 2 to the power of 2. But because this is inexact, you wind up with hard to predict errors. Other ways to encode decimal numbers that avoid the approximation problem by limiting you to an exact precision or a pre-specified number of decimal points. In Ruby, you can do this using the big decimal class, which forces you to declare a precision and in turn gives you an exact representation. So now using big decimal, 3.01 times 5 exactly equals 15.05. If you're also in Ruby, you can use the money gem to represent money, which wraps big decimal and gives you some more user-friendly APIs to handle currency transactions and display options. I recommend using the money gem if you're doing financial arithmetic in Ruby. It will solve all kinds of problems. Thanks, I'm Noel Rappin. If you want to know more about handling financial transactions on the web, check out my book, Take My Money. See you soon.